In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how I shoot on 16 millimeter film in a more affordable way. Now, part of that is buying film in larger quantities. So this is a 400 foot reel and I bought it expired and stored properly uh, from someone who had kept it in a refrigerator and have kept it myself stored properly for the last 12 years. And this is some old Fuji film F64D and I've shot it in already and it looks great. It still is about the same actual speed. I shoot it at about 50 um, and it comes out great. And one of the nice things about that is that you can get so much more film for so much cheaper if you're just willing to buy some expired film that's been stored properly. But when you get this film, you'll run into some issues if you're using cameras like the Bolex H16 or the Bull UR16 in that they only accept 100 foot daylight spools or even I guess 100 foot cores would work as well. But you're gonna need to re-spool this film in a way that keeps it in the same orientation that it came from the factory in. So what we're gonna do is walk through all the steps that we need to do to get there. Uh, and, and first what you'll need is, is a few pieces. So you'll see here that I have these two rewinds here. Now these can be 3D printed. Someone on Thingiverse came up with these designs and they're great. And I, I use them myself. And, and what I've done is I've just taped them, double side taped them to this Ikea cutting board, which fits perfectly into my film changing tent. So I can have this very compact sort of piece of equipment that I can just put into my film changing tent and re-spool film whenever I need. So these are really important um, and they're very affordable if you can 3D print them yourselves or you could even get them ordered. But in general, film rewinds, you can buy them um, on eBay for probably around $100 or so. Um, and then the second piece that's important is having what are called split reels. So this is something I designed, um, but it's just a very common thing. Um, that doesn't really exist so much anymore, um, but it was very common when people were working with film on a more more frequent basis. But you can buy them, but they're usually very expensive, around uh, $125 or so for, for a metal one of these. But I made these 3D designs so you can print them yourself and you can get one for, you know, just a couple of bucks in filament at the end of the day. Um, you can also buy them from my website if that's something that you don't wanna do yourself. But the important part is that they can be separated and reconnected so that when we load our simple cord film onto it, it doesn't accordion out. So that's the first step, is you wanna pinch the film tightly. Once you take it out of the bag, it will be in a bag in there. And open up your reel, and one side of your reel will have a little pin. And that actually fits into the core that comes on all film. So you will take the film and place it onto that pin and it will catch right there. And the next part, which is very important, is to, to screw this top on. And once we're there, the film is safe. It's not just gonna unspool all of a sudden. So what we can do now is we can load it on here and we, we wanna roll it onto something else. Now, you, if you have a 400 foot rule, reel, you can use that in this case, but I have another one of these you know, split reels, which work fine as well. So what I've done, if you look in the inside of here, is I put a core, 16 millimeter core in there, so that I can actually attach the film easily Stick it right in there. And we'll just, you know, give it a good wind. And once it's at least one wind around, I will just spin my, my other side onto it. and then attach it to the other rewind. So now, and you wanna just kinda of pull it tight. Now, you can basically move this to the other reel. Now what we're doing here is we're just changing it to another reel so that when we go back 
to the 100 foot reels that we're gonna spool this down to, it's gonna be in the same orientation it already was in. So you wanna keep track of that. Like don't change the orientation in any way. And it's always best to go top to top just so that you don't lose uh, you know, the order that it's wound in. All right, and so there we have all of the film moved over to this other reel. So now we can load on our 100 foot daylight spool, which will be our final stage. And ideally you have you know four of these ready. Um, and you also can use cores instead. So uh, if you wanted to, you could actually load it back onto a core like I have in here. Um, which is a nice idea if you're doing sync sound because sometimes these metal reels can make a bit of noise inside of your camera. And so uh, a lot of times I'll like to actually spool up onto just plain cores. Um, and also if you have a camera like the Eclair ACL that can shoot um, on a 200 foot magazine, it's actually pretty nice to be able to spool up a 200 foot uh, load, which would just be doing a 100, a 100, and then the rest would be 200 feet. That's sort of how I would calculate it anyway. And so you start going this way, and what you wanna do is you wanna roll until you have about just a quarter of an inch, maybe even less, maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, below the uh, edge of, of the spool here of film filled all the way up. So you just start cranking. Okay, and we're getting close to the end here, and when you're doing this completely in the dark, you aren't gonna be able to just look and see you know, how much film you have left, so you're gonna need to use your finger to just kind of feel and say, hmm, that's about you know, a little bit of the tip of my finger, maybe a little bit more. And then I think around here we would call it good, and what you wanna do is grab a scissors inside of your dark changing tent and make a cut on that film. And then what you can do is you can take off that 100 foot reel and put it back into a container like the ones that come with your Kodak film. And you can put it into there, seal it up and, and have some tape in there with you and just tape it and label it and stick it in your fridge. And you just do that three more times and you've got your 400 foot reel spooled down to 100 foot reels that are ready to be shot in camera because they're the exact same orientation as how the film came from the factory. And that's just a great way to, to basically shoot film on sort of a more affordable budget and also just sort of a fun way to, to, to work with film using your hands and, and sort of get to know the medium a little more closely. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. And uh, as always, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos. And, and hopefully uh, next week I can get into some more sort of 16 millimeter film uh, cameras that, that we can review as well. So thanks for watching.